guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today, well, today we're going to be getting into Silverfish boss automation. Yeah, it's going to be a fun-filled one. Hopefully you guys are ready. So getting started today, there's a couple of mods that I'm going to have to touch on to uh, sort of make my life a little bit easier progressing through this pack. So if we take a look at our uh, tab up here called Exploration, and we have our boss dungeon, we've already killed the boss, the Silverfish boss, which is absolutely amazing. Um, but there is a way to automate it. And I completely understand this way of automating. Um, this is a Drigme charm. So we are gonna have to dive a little bit into Ars Nouveau, which I am very familiar with, and then Industrial Foregoing to get a Stasis Chamber. Uh, the Stasis Chamber is gonna require a little bit of power, but what this can do is this can suspend a mob, such as the Wither, um, or in this case, the Silverfish, it can suspend it, and then we can use a Drigme, um, which basically harvests items off of mobs, hostile and passive, and including modded mobs. Um, it can harvest, put them in a chest, and uh, it gets really happy about it. And uh, well, that's the way that we are going to be automating. Uh, also, did this quest reward literally just give me a dark power MK2 power flower? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it just did. Um, and we got a bunch of other cool things, including a colossal star. <laughs> wow, just throw EMC at me, why don't you? Because my God, look how much EMC this star holds. What even? That is 1.6 trillion EMC we just put in our... What even? <laughs> I just... <laughs> Oh, this stuff is crazy. And we can just pull these out now. I mean, I don't think we'll ever need any EMC anymore. Like, um, yeah, these just are going to passively produce EMC and then we can upgrade. Wow. Well, did we just, I can't believe we just got that from. Huh. All right. Industrial foregoing. That's what we're going to work on today. So getting started with industrial foregoing is honestly quite simple. Um, so I went ahead and made myself a little room here, which is honestly right above this down here. So it kind of fit perfectly because as I was breaking it through, I was like, huh, I wonder if I'm going to break into my wall. Uh, so I raised it up one and we have this nice little room in here, of course, fitting all the same themes. But what I'm going to use is a factory placer and I need this to be placed facing up like this. And now the good part about this is I can place a block in here and look, it's going to place it. Uh, and then what we need is the fluid extractor to go on each side. These are the fluid extractors because to get started with industrial four going, you need latex. This is how we're going to get ourselves some latex. And then right here in the back, I'm just going to slap on some power. And uh, these work a little bit faster with the power. And we're going to need a constant supply of latex. So might as well get a, a good jump on this now. And at the moment, we could probably just speed this up a little bit. Yeah. Let's give this a nice little jump start. So with exactly one bucket ready to go, bam, now we have access to a latex processing unit. Um, so a furnace and a block of redstone. We have ourselves a latex processing unit. Um, and what this is going to be used for is basically we just need to send the liquid from here to the latex processing unit just to generate resources. Um, and to do that, we can just run some pipes, some simple pipes. And I'm just going to lay some down right here and just run this over to this machine. Now, later, what I'm probably going to do is use ender tanks because I think having latex in an ender tank is going to be the best way to go about doing this. But for now, I just need to get it over there so we can start making uh, some plastic because we're going to need plastic. At least once we get like our first bit of plastic, we really need have, won't have to worry about it much anymore. Um, but yeah, our configurator, we're going to set that up. Boop. And then we have that should be heading all the way over here into this and filling with latex. Perfect. Now, we also need water. So is a sink in here? What is our good method of going about getting water? Um, we have eggs. Um, I guess we could go ahead. Oh, I know what we can use. We can just go a simple uh, aqueous accumulator. The probably the most overlooked thing. <laughs> Good old Aki's Accumulator. I think I've moved all of my stuff over, so everything's in here. 
Um, I need to grab a few stacks and put everything in there. But an Oculus Accumulator is going to require bronze. Uh, bronze. There's some bronze. And a little redstone servo. And we are ready to rock and roll. Um, just need two buckets of water. And we should be good. So, thankfully the eggs with a bucket work just fine. If you have a bucket anyways. So what I should be able to do with this is just boop this from underneath. Oculus accumulator. And the two buckets on the side. There we go. And this can extract. Um, so we can have the water set to pull. And there we go. We have it filling with water. Point. And we have plastic at our fingertips. Ah, which is perfect, because we are going to need it for a stasis chamber. Also, all the other mechanics that we have to go through with this. Yeah, so we are about to make, with all this set up, um, we are basically working our way towards a dissolution chamber. Once we have the dissolution chamber, we can actually start making some more of this stuff. Um, we're also going to potentially need pink slime. We'll see, this needs latex, and this needs pink slime. Now, to get pink slime... Hopefully I'm not rushing this too much, but to get pink slime, we are going to take our mob farm and we're going to be converting it to a uh, slaughter farm. So we are going to need ourselves a mob slaughter factory in order to get pink slime. So this generating some nice dry or tiny dry pellets. We convert this over. This just has to be smelted up real quick. Uh, still using, actually we could probably drop it down here. I forgot that I had, I had made a really fast furnace. Drop the dry rubber in there. That's going to produce plastic. And this is the plastic that we need in order to make the dissolution chamber. Now, dissolution chamber is probably the uh, the next step forward in making everything faster. And I think getting upgrades started, which we already have some upgrades. But I'm going to talk about the upgrades here in a second. I wonder if I can go about speeding all this up by moving this pedestal. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a pick. That's the whole thing I'm working on is to make it a little easier to kill the silverfish. Maybe if we put it inside the pulverizer here and we get ourselves a little bit, a little bit of sawdust, well, that's too much, <laughs> too much sawdust. Maybe we can make a box from mechanism and I maybe we can pick this thing up. Uh, if I can pick it up and move it, that'd be great. I can move it into the room and boop. <laughs> yes, we can move it this way. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is going to be one of the easiest ways to do this. And there we go. And pop this back on. Ah, there we go. Yeah, now we have plenty. Plenty of latex. Now that the pipe is the only thing that's the, the problem here. Uh, but this is going to allow me to set up automation for this. Um, so the latex is flowing in. And what we need to do now is go into industrial foregoing. And we need to make the uh, diamond tier or the tier two processors. So we have a speed upgrade that's tier two, an efficiency upgrade that's tier two, and a processing. Now, they're very similar. All of them are. As you can see, these this is probably the hardest one to craft as it requires the crafting table in that. But we can actually set this up and lock in our inputs for this. Um, so we can definitely lock these in and have it pull from this side. So this can say be set to pull, whereas the output we set to push. Ah, I love this machine. So with this accelerated, man, it is really, really pumping out these upgrades. And uh, we're going to need these upgrades. So 16. There we go. Just made enough. I'm going to go ahead and unlock this. I think 16 is of each is definitely plenty for right now. Um, unfortunately, they don't have EMC values, but that's okay. Okay. We have the power of the watch of flowing time. While I'm working on this, I just realized, instead of me running around the base like a chicken with my head cut off, I could, you know, make myself a flight. <laughs> I don't know why I have decided to not do that to this point. All I need is some feathers, I need a band, and I think I can literally just craft all this right here. Yep. Boop. <laughs> and it's that easy. And, uh, yeah, so basically I get create a flight now. I wonder if this would make fighting the, uh, the worm a little bit easier, or the, the silverfish. Yeah, probably. So it's time to modify, yeah, modify our mob farm. Just a little bit. 
Uh, this may be temporary for right now, but uh, down here, pop down here. I need to turn this lever off because honestly, we can just, I think, leave it the way it is um, and just place the slaughter factory right here. Um, and I'll just move my chests, ender chests, and move my jumbo XP tank. Place down two tanks right here. And we just need to turn this on and put a range upgrade. Thankfully, we have range upgrades that we've gotten. And put some power in the back. Good old slaughter factory. And it should start chomping away at these mobs, as you can see, as soon as it does its uh, motion there. And then we can take all three of these, all three different types, put them inside this, and this thing is going to be going incredibly fast. <laughs> As you can see right there, we already have tons of liquid meat, which is a food substitute. We're going to have that push to that side. I'm going to push this to the right. And so we should end up with pink slime over here in this tank. And then in this tank, we end up with liquid meat. Ooh, there we go. Hey, and there's some pink slime. Honestly, in my case with the liquid meat, probably just going to void it off and uh, maybe use an ender tank with uh, some pink... Maybe we can do, I don't know, do I have, I should have some pink dye laying around. I'm going to use a pink ender tank for this. Now to be able to make that stasis chamber that I'm after, let's go ahead and set this to pull. There we go. And that's going to pull in that pink slime. And then what I need to do is upgrade the simple machine frames that I just made up. I just got these guys made. We need to take netherite scrap. And honestly, I just need one for right now. And we've got to start working on setting this up. I mean, if anything, we can at least get this thing to spawn and hold it into that stasis chamber so it doesn't move around all over the place. But let's work on getting this. It needs some plastic, diamond, and scrap, and it does need a little bit of pink slime. However, it doesn't actually tell you how much. So now that I have my advanced machine frame, stasis chamber is ready to go. Perfect. Now let's see what goodies we get from this if we get any more crazy EMC items. Because what we did get was quite crazy earlier. Did we get anything? We got a train schedule. Oh, yeah. Speaking of... Uh, th that, that just reminded me. There's an item in here that lets you teleport. Very similar to the Loki teleportation. Um, I've got to remember the name of it. That's right. It's called a Tempad, right? Tempad. Yeah, this thing right here. Fully charged will take three to recharge after... And, uh, yeah, so this thing is kind of interesting, and if you're familiar with Loki at all, you will probably get it. Um, let's see, we need, what, tinted glass? Very vanilla recipes, very interesting. But yeah, this thing is, uh, kind of quirky. Um, I was, so we were on our sub server, and, uh, they were playing around with it, and I was like, that thing is kind of cool. So, basically, I think you can store a location. Okay, so run program, action, list, select program, options. Select a color, go with orange. Run program, new location. Um, home, add location. Okay. Uh, run program, home, teleport. <laughs> that's so cool that is so cool yes this is just straight up a tem pad um okay and it takes three minutes to recharge but still it's a it's straight up that's straight up loki that's so funny i love that i had to test that out real quick anyways back to this um we now have our stasis chamber and so all we have to do with this is give it power and we can also use a range upgrade on this. I don't know how big of a range upgrade we're going to need. Uh, definitely big enough to catch the thing. And then we're going to also need uh, torches. Not just any torches, though. Um, let's see. We're going to need Torch Master. And this particular torch. Um, so a couple of torches. And this right here is supposed to prevent all those mobs that, are, that have been spawning in our special area. Yeah, we probably want to lay this down. 
just to prevent them from spawning. By the way, these are all lodestones. I just realized that. So what I might do is break this down low enough. Just place it right here in the center of the room. Awesome. So now that that's in, <laughs> you can see all the mess from me killing these mobs. Now we shouldn't have to worry about the slime spawning in. However, I don't know if the ender mites and stuff spawn in from this thing. Hmm. So just to test this out, I, I really want to see how this is going to function. Um, I think right here, I can put the stasis chamber. And then down below, I need my flux point. We'll go ahead and link that. Um, that's going to give power to this. And then I need to put a range upgrade. Actually, where is our power? Uh-oh. Need to make sure that we're getting getting power to this. Power may be taking a minute because it has to get to everything else, I guess. Might need to go back to the base. Thankfully, I have this beautiful tin bed for that. How cool. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, teleport. <laughs> this is, I'm too giddy about this because it's just it's just so funny. Like that's that's pretty cool. Well, I think I found the problem. <laughs> Our base was not chunk loaded. Huh, yeah, how are we going to generate power if the power shuts off every time we leave our base? So, now it's up and running. Um, all I have to do is place in, like I said, that range 4 upgrade? Or maybe we can't. Weird, because I can't even see the working area of the stasis chamber. I'm pretty sure we could, I thought we could increase the range, but I guess not. I guess we just hope that it makes its way here. Because there is no other way to figure this out. Okay. Well, this is the stasis chamber. We can't see the working area. Um, redstone ignored. Redstone ignored. It should be running. I mean, all we have left to do is to spawn this thing. Oh, it definitely works with me in it. So I was inside of it. That was, that definitely, uh, that definitely did work. Plus, put that there. Eggs there. Last but not least, we summon this. And we just hope that this thing comes our way. If not, I do have a way of killing it. And hopefully staying away from it works. There it goes. Man, that'll be really cool once it's like lingering in the stasis chamber. Like it did. Okay. Now it did spawn these guys. But notice it is just suspended here. It is literally suspended, and is it really doing anything now? And it's desecrating. Ooh, this is the desecrating one. This would have been awful to fight. But yeah, it's it's literally put in like no AI mode <laughs> right now. Um, so we have this part of the puzzle solved. Now the whole other part of this puzzle, uh, of course, we do need to claim this part that we're in. I'm gonna go ahead and chunk load it. Just to make sure that it is uh, always gonna stay like this. Um, it's gonna be using power to hold this in its state. And now we need a drig me. And that might be a little bit harder to get than, uh, I don't know, it shouldn't be too hard. We are gonna need a passive mob farm for that. Now to get these little drig me guys to spawn, we do need delightful dirt. And we're gonna have to get into ours just a little bit to do this. Surprisingly, it's it's not gonna be that difficult to do. Now, to be able to get delightful dirt, um, we are going to need chicken feed. Not GM chicken feed. This is how you uh, get a mob spawn egg. This is the nutritious one. Uh, apparently, we need beetroots, carrots, and wheat, which I know I put all inside here. You know, I wonder if this will let me use it on any chicken. How about we spawn this? <laughs> it does. It does. We can literally use it on any chicken. That's hilarious. Okay, so we need a little patch of grass also to do this. Um, let's see, grass. We have grass seeds. Dirt. And uh, I think, actually, do we need grass? I think we just need dirt. We literally just need a dirt area. Um, and we can convert this. I mean, this is probably going to be... It's going to be somewhat temporary. We don't need a huge area. We just need to get Drigme to spawn. And this is going to flood our base. I'm almost positive. It's going gonna, it's gonna to flood our base with mobs. And uh, there we go. Actually, we're already getting some R's mobs. Chickens? 
and everything else. But the one we need is a little guy that has like a little mustache and a hat. Hopefully we can get one to spawn. So one ended up spawning and I'm pretty sure it went into this room. Uh oh, there it is. And what we need to do is actually give it a wilden horn. And I think, do we drop it on it? I think we, yeah, we drop it on it and it turns into Drigme shards. We get two of those. Um, so at the very moment, <laughs> we have rabbits spawning everywhere. Um, let's see, I might be able to stop this from spawning by trap doors, placing trap doors on this for right now. Um, we can always make more in the future, but I'm going to shut this off right now. Hopefully that stops them from spawning. Um, now that we have this, we need to take these and, ooh, ooh, never mind. We need, we need silverfish, four silverfish hearts to make this thing. Ouch. To make a Drigme, we need this. Okay. I mean, this is, we have to kill that silverfish four more times. I mean, at least it's easy and it's stasis, but man, well, uh, we also need the enchanting apparatus. All of this, fairly simple. But there is one little setup that we're going to have to do um, that involves this mod. And that is, we need to get source gems. And to be able to make source gems, I believe it's just lapis and automated in a, a little pedestal um, that we have to find. So, does it tell us how to make these? Yeah, the imbuement chamber. So, I am imbuement... We need archwood, um, which I thought we had, but we've probably used it. Um, I don't know. Is there a market? How do we get archwood saplings? Never mind. We have a bunch of archwood. <laughs> we have a we have archwood saplings, anyways. Um, yeah, because we're gonna need this. Uh, we're gonna need these trees, and hopefully this is a big enough area. If not, I might use our other area for this. Yeah, this grows quite a large tree, so we do need the uh, a little bit of area here given to it. I would say a 5x5 five five or 4x4, four four, something like this will definitely work. Hopefully that doesn't like pierce down in, underneath there. There we go, and of course we've got to chop this bad boy down. There we go. Look at that. Wait, is there a bee up there just randomly dropping stuff? So the imbuement chamber is pretty simple to set up. Um, all we need to do is give it lapis. And we just kind of sit back and uh, it'll do its thing without us really needing to do anything. So as you can see, it does have a crafting process. I'm going to say that it'll be faster doing its process around this potentially. Um, and we can't do a hopper. We do have to do like a filter set up for this so we could use the pipes mod and make a very simple filter for this i think is it diamond tier that lets you do filtering might be diamond tier um so filtering in is fine but filtering out that's where we're going to run into an issue so let's make a couple of barrels so what we'll have is a barrel right here and we can have a barrel right here have this connected. We need a pipe wrench. What is this requiring? Br brass, okay. i tell you what, that is a lot of steps <laughs> to put a mod in here to make you have to go through to make the wrench that allows it to work. Ouch, man, that is a lot of steps to go through. But I mean, I guess? So I'm gonna I put the die rod down in here and I literally put the brass in gonna take a couple of seconds but there's the brass rods that I need wow so much for just a, a wrench goodness so with that done all we gotta do is set this like that on the uh, the butt end I would say and then this needs to be a filter as you can see it's automatically pulling through but what will happen is I believe if we put lapis in here lapis will start getting pulled through the other side so we don't want that to happen Instead, we want to filter on the whitelist, make this a whitelist, we'll add an item, and that'll be this, and submit. Now, Lapis should no longer get built up in there, and we're perfect. Now, does this, does this speed up, or is this real time? It definitely allows for the speed up, 
which is perfect. So I definitely have some work ahead of me. I have literally four more of these silverfish to kill before we can automate this. Technically, I need enough shards for five. I've got to go shard hunting. You know, at least with the stasis chamber, this thing is really easy to kill, by the way. Very easy to kill. Yep, just has to go through its phases. I'm about to test something. We'll see. I have a mob crusher I went ahead and made. And uh, maybe this will help with some of the weird, like, mobs? Or, uh, not do anything at all? Oh. There it goes. Um, I mean, it's not killing those things. It's kind of interesting that it's not actually killing really anything. Uh, even the skeletons, it's not, uh. Is it actually killing those things? Oh, there it goes. It's it's actually killing the skeletons. But is it killing these things? Because these guys are the ones that are the worst. Yeah, I think I think they may be exempt <laughs> from the mop crusher. Uh, yeah, they're exempt. Uh, well, darn. So, but I'd be able to get rid of them because some of them, some of them don't take kindly to damage. So after all of that craziness of getting the boss. We have tons of source, which is perfect, uh, because we are going to need this to convert into the stone material here. Because we are going to need an arcane, arcane pedestal, an arcane, or sorry, an enchanting apparatus, and we're basically going to need the whole get up as far as the enchanting setup goes. Now, the interesting part is, well, we really don't need anything fancy to use this. So we have an arcane core and then an enchanting apparatus. And there's nothing to really to this. Um, so you put the uh, the core on the bottom, the apparatus on the top, and then all we need is this sort of surrounded or near. We need eight of these. And then uh, we need the thing that goes in the middle, which is our Drigme. And then we need to place four of these hearts on here, a seed, and then three of the source gems. And then last but not least, we put the Drigme shard in the middle, it does its beautiful thing right here. Just like that. There's literally nothing to this. Boop. And we get ourselves the Drigme charm. Now, if you don't want to do anything else after this, if you don't want to have to worry about despawning it or what have you, you should be good. Um, however, we are going to need source in some way to generate source to get this guy to work. Um, so I recommend setting up about, let's see, uh, as far as ours, I recommend bringing over, just to sort of get this thing going, um, we are gonna need, let's see, about four volcanic source links. So you're gonna wanna make yourself about four volcanic source links, and we are going to need ourselves a drawer and just some way to pipe coal, which we have a coal drawer. I'm gonna go ahead and actually get my my linker here. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this coal drawer linked up to my coal, and we'll use these volcanic source with a source jar to feed this Drigme. That's all you need. You just need to have this and a source jar nearby. These will feed the source jar. It's It's quite simple, literally just one source jar should be enough to handle this whole setup. And then you need a chest and some fence. So, so a fence, any kind will work. And we are going to put the Drigme in a fence with a chest and put it near the stasis chamber. And this is, this should automate it. So all I have to do to get this working is I'm going to take, I mean, shoot, we can even just use three of these. It, I'm, I'm sure three of them are, are, would be enough, but we need the pedestals and I'm going to set these pedestals on here, just like this. These are going to be connected to the pipe and these are going to receive coal. Um, and uh, we just need to hook the coal drawer up to it. Make sure we say, hey, pull out. And hopefully this will be able to take, these sources will be able to take. If not, I'm gonna put the volcanic source here. There we go. Now they'll take and they should be sending source. 
as you can see, into that source jar. And then all we have left to do is literally place our Drigme right here, right? Do I have to shift right click the Drigme? I'm such a dork, guys. I forgot. The Drigme actually requires um, something more elaborate. Um, you have to place it on... Um, let's actually pull this up. You have to place it, I believe, on mossy cobblestone. So by simply placing it on a piece of mossy, it should now work. And boop. There we go. We see all this happening. And we should get a little nice happy Drigme. Look at that. Very happy, and it's uh, ready to go. Now, of course, one last thing. We need to dye it, of course, my favorite color. But you can see it's working, even though it's kind of wonky looking. It should work, and it should place the items into this chest once it has taken enough time. The only way to speed it up is really to um, just have more Drigme. But as you can see, they're quite expensive. But once we get more of the hearts in here that it's drawing from this, we should be good. Now, really, like I said, the only real way to sort of speed it up is, well, give it a couple more mobs to, to feed off of. Um, that sounds really weird, but it does like having multiple mobs around it, including this rabbit. If I can grab a hold of this rabbit in a tuxedo. All right, so um, if we place mobs around it, of course, it's going to benefit a little bit from that. And... Uh, Hopefully produce more. There's a sheep hiding over here somewhere. Ah, I hear it. Oh, there it is. It's one of the conveyor belts. We have a sheep on a belt. Nice. Okay. So with all of this, we teleport back. We can give the Drigme a couple more things. It's going to make it a little bit happier. And has the chance of speeding things up. But the hinge is what should deposit the items in here. So, for example, if I put this in here, it's going to be nice and happy, the chicken... And this, it's like, hey, there's more over here. There's more mobs. And the more you put in here, the happier it will be. Um, and hopefully, we'll produce something. Kind of waiting on it. So, wasn't expecting it to quite work this way, but um, it's really happy about all the mobs that I put in here. And uh, I can tell you, it's happy because it dropped this all at once. That's right, two silverfish hearts and... We're automated, baby. I have to say, that was definitely an interesting way of automating such things. I know I've used it before in other packs, but interesting to use it on a boss such as this. Huh, wonder how that came to be in uh, a quest. <laughs> I have no idea. But, guys, I appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much. If you would, click that subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video and you learned something new. And, uh, well, also comment something down below letting me know all the things that I do wrong or do good. Of course, that's how I communicate with you guys. I love reading the comments. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. But I do read them uh, just about every night. So, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And, of course, I will see you in the next episode. And, as always, thanks for watching.